So um, uh, just as like an introduction for people that may just be getting to know you for the first time, kind of give us a brief introduction, uh, who you are, what you're about, and uh, what got you into music. Yeah, um, well, my name's Jimmy Bowen, um, and I'm an Americana, red dirt, Texas red dirt artist, and mm -hmm. uh, got into music when I was uh, actually five years old. My father bought me a guitar when I was five years old from a flea market. It was a $5 guitar, and uh, it's it, I got kind of wrapped up in it, and when all the other kids in the neighborhood were playing baseball, I was trying to play music from a record player <laughs> and sitting there and listening to records and trying to learn music. And, and that's kind of what it, it kind of sprung from there and it, and it went from there and uh, it's kind of grown since then. Awesome. So, awesome. I, do I hear mash or is that Star Trek playing in the background? Um, it's it, it, well, actually in the background, um, I am a huge Andy Griffith nut. Okay. So Andy Griffith is on my TV back over that way. <laughs> okay. I, I heard something that reminded me of my childhood my dad would leave on like me tv and it was like mash and yeah, andy griffith yeah, yeah right now well i go from me tv to sundance and right now yeah. it's on sundance because andy's yeah. on till 12. <laughs> yeah i got you fair enough fair enough but um so really excited to have you on um uh as you you, you got your start you said you uh but were first introduced with the guitar, right? Was I? Or Did I you, sorry, by uh, right. <laughs> uh, I, I got so many buttons going off over here. It's like, oh, which ones do I have to? Which ones? Oh, I, 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 I bet. I bet. I bet. Uh, so, kind of getting your start in music. Were your were your parents a catalyst in that, or was it kind of something that you just kind of found on your own? Well, it was kind of somewhat. Uh, my mother, uh, my mother actually, um, she was stricken with multiple sclerosis back when I was about five years old. But prior to that, uh, she played play piano, and um, she traveled a lot with a lot of the old Southern gospel quartets. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, not as not as a musician, but she was she knew a lot of them. She played piano, organ. Uh, my father played guitar and neither one of my parents played professionally uh, but my father played um my uncle played um i had a cousin that played i had another cousin who's a great pianist so the music was kind of music was kind of in the dna so to speak uh yeah. so we i i kind of took it but i kind of took it on the more serious note because of uh when i was nine i started when i was five mm -hmm. and I got with a group there. I'm originally from Charlotte, North Carolina, and I got with a group there when I was nine years old playing guitar. And and it was really, for, for looking back now, it was really kind of cool and exciting. But back then, it was really cool because it was a bar in Charlotte, and it still had the chicken wire because right. eventually about by 11, 30, 12 o'clock, here comes the beer bottles and the fights in the bar. So you had to play behind chicken wire, which was really, it was really exciting. I found mm -hmm. it kind of cool. But but anyway, we played it on Tuesday and Thursday nights and played from nine to one. And the bar owner paid me $10 a night each night. So I was making $20 a week. And I'm like, I am the richest fourth grader I've ever known. This is really cool. And I'm like, I can make a living at this. And so it's, it's either living the dream or living the nightmare, one or the other ever since. So. <laughs> <laughs> so none of my other family members, they took it serious. I mean, they played in churches and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. But they never took it. They went out and got them a job. So yeah, yeah I, didn't want job. I, didn't, I didn't want a job. So I didn't want to work. Yeah. Listening <laughs> to you nice. describe that scene, it's like that uh, scene out of Blues Brothers where they go to. Um, <laughs> yeah, what, that is, the, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was like that. I mean, it was cool. You start off at nine o'clock and it's cool. But about, about 11, 30, 12 o'clock, then you're pretty much done. And it was kind of. Uh, somewhat structured like a, a, a biker bar mm -hmm. type deal. Yeah. So you had some, you know, occasionally some of the uh, North Carolina part of the Hells Angels would kind of come in and have a few beers and whatever and that kind of thing. Nice. And, but, and, and, but some of the nicest people though, I got to know yeah. some of them and, yeah. and they were really, really cool guys, you know, but yeah. that kind of, that kind of started this whole avalanche of, of music for me. Yeah. <laughs> 
playing in a bar behind chicken wire. Hey, <laughs> if that's not a if that's not a country song, I don't know what is. So, I know, I know. There, there's a there's a hit there somewhere, you know. Yeah. Um. So cutting your, you said you were in fourth, fifth grade at that time when you were doing that, or was that? Yeah. I was nine, six. Uh, yeah, I was in th yeah third or fourth grade. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, so in actually, in, in actually North Carolina, you couldn't you couldn't be in the bar at that age. Of course, it's yeah. like, well, how's this fourth grader playing in a bar? Yeah. Well, you know, it was kind of like I said, kind of like a biker bar type thing. So the guy kind of bent some rules. But anyway, when we weren't on stage, I actually had to leave the bar. I had yeah. to leave the establishment. Well, he had gone on the backside and built this really cool sunroom type deal. Yeah, and a it to the building and he had a tv out there so it's really cool so when it was when we would break i would go out there and he'd have me a cheeseburger and fries and have cartoons on tv for me and i just sit out there until the break was over and then holler and say hey we're ready and i'd go back through the little bar and, and go back and play so you know i i'm sure that was still illegal back then but, <laughs> hey, but you know what, though, it, it's not the most illegal thing i've seen like it's oh, uh, yeah I, i've heard stories i i had a buddy who's in a band he was in still in high school and they would sneak him into the bar <laughs> while because he was their lead singer and he was like 17 while the rest of them were all 21, 22, yeah. whatever it was. And right. they'd sneak him into the bar and then he'd have to sneak out. And while they're in there drinking, partying, whatever, whatever bill they got or whatever payday they got, he'd be out in the car doing his high school algebra homework because he had nothing <laughs> else to do. Nothing else to do. Might as well do yeah. homework. Right. It's, I remember when he told me that story, I was like, that's close. That's close to one of the best stories I've ever heard. So, oh, I know. Yeah. 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 Cool. Stories. Oh, cool. Yeah. Stories. Oh, so kind of cutting your teeth there. Where does it kind of move on from there? Do you, are you sticking around in North Carolina a while or do you? I, no, I, I stuck around. I mean, I had, I had bands in you know, in high school and then, and then, um, I don't know. I, I've always been this this person that tries to think ahead. Mm -hmm. um, my publicist and my agent and everybody on my team, they like, you know, do you ever sleep? Do you ever do you ever stop thinking? Do you ever stop doing this? I'm like, no, I'm always thinking. So in high school, I was thinking like, OK, what am I going to do if something does happen that mm -hmm. I can't fulfill performing? And mm -hmm. so I ran off after high school and um went to the citadel in mm. charleston south carolina which is a military school yeah and um went down there and got an accounting degree and um dabbled some with the, with the law and um actually been a military school i was actually trained um to go into go into united states marine corps mm -hmm. and the military school and uh, um i still had a band there uh those were cool days too because there was in charleston they had certain uh like palomino type country bars and this that, and the other and and i would go a wall to 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 play during the week and, and slide back in when i could I, and i very i almost got caught one night but but i didn't but it was a lot of fun but that's kind of what sprung me with that i i went on and 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 had the band in college there at the citadel but got my degree mm -hmm. just in case of something you yeah. know have an accounting degree, I thought, well, you know, I could I could be Garth Brooks accountant. At least I could yeah. be around it. <laughs> right. You know, that kind of thing. So I did that. And then when I got out of when I graduated and and got through the military part of my life there, um, I moved to Nashville. And I thought, mm -hmm. well, I'm always the type of person that I don't like to wonder what would have happened. Yeah. I'd rather go out there and and try it. And if I fail, I fail. Uh, but at least I tried it. There's a mm -hmm. lot of people who don't, you know, they're scared to, to make the move or they're trying to, you know, and, and I thought, well, you know, uh, so me and my wife moved here. Uh, I think my daughter, uh, the kids we had, we, we had three kids and uh, my daughter was six weeks old and we packed up the car and she quit her job and we moved to Nashville. Didn't have a nice. job, didn't have a place to live, had nowhere to go. <laughs> just went for it. Oh, it was just, it was, you know, thinking back, thinking back now, it's really adventurous, but back then it was very stressful. Mm -hmm. You know, I've yeah. got a six week old child. I got to feed, I got to support, got to put a roof over our head. I don't yeah. have a job. My wife don't have a job. It's like, okay, what are we going to do? So um, looking back, it was like, well, exciting days, but um, um, I don't know if I'd want to relive them, especially this day and time. I don't know if I right. want to relive 
those days. But um, but that's kind of where it sparked. It got me here. Um, and uh, so that's, you know, I, I just wanted to come try it. It was really funny. I had a lot of people that I played music with back when I was a, a teenager. And, you know, surprisingly, a, a lot of them kind of, you know, you know, when people kind of, I don't know if it's a jealousy thing, they kind of laugh at you when you tell, hey, I'm going to move to L.A. I'm going to move right. to New York. I want to try yeah. it. And it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like, no, you know, and it was a lot of people that that kind of laughed at me mm -hmm. when I moved here. And they were like, you know, uh, you, you're never going to do anything in Nashville and this, that, and the other. And But I've been very blessed. I've been very blessed, you know, with with what we've been able to achieve and musically. And uh, and now it's even now it's even better with uh with covid um come around um we started our own television show yep. and um i wanted to do that um because of the uh number one covid kind of knocked everybody out of work for a while kind of shut the entertainment industry down and so we're like okay what are we gonna do and i'm like well let's let's i always want to start my own television show because you don't our our show is as a variety show and you don't mm -hmm. see those anymore i come from a bluegrass background actually yep. come from carolina and moved over to the americana and and uh doing the red dirt down in texas now and but but my guest artists i want them to be different mm -hmm. uh, whether they're whether they're contemporary christian or old school quartet singing or new country old country rock uh, bluegrass, uh, Irish, reggae, whatever it may be, I want them to be different because you don't see. I grew up watching shows like the Porter Wagner Show, um, mm -hmm. Pop Country, Jim Ed Brown Show, Nashville on the Road, all these shows, and you don't see them anymore. And so that was the main goal there was to have um, a television show that had a variety. I do my thing, but then my guest does something totally, totally different. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and it's, it's, uh, we're getting ready to go into our eighth season. I've been very blessed and it's, and it's, and it's gone real well so far. That's really cool. That's, uh, you know, having tried to produce television content, I know it's not easy, uh, cause the original live and amplified series, the, the brand right. was a TV show idea that we had and we, we had gotten a few offers to, uh, air in a few different places but the demand the continuous demand of consistency having stuff ready each week it became mm -hmm. too much like it was like yeah, yeah. It, it's 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 really you know the way we're set up we film we film in january and we film in june mm -hmm. and the networks have us on um basically every six months we have to mm -hmm. give them a new series yeah um it's fun, but you're you're right. It is, it's it's a lot of work. It's a lot of stress, and yeah. I enjoy it. But some, <laughs> I'll be honest. Sometimes I sit down and just get out really, really publicly. But sometimes I sit back and I'm like, man, why did I ever start this animal? You know, right? I I do like it, but it's just. But I've got a great team. That that's the yeah. thing that I'm so blessed with. Um, that's the Cranford. that's the key word right there is team. You have a team. Oh, I have. I tell you what. When we first filmed, when we first filmed the first, very first series in twenty, um, I had a few people that uh, really weren't on board with it. Mm -hmm. So I made some changes, and so at, at the time, it was just me and my production manager doing it. And mm -hmm. um, th then my publisher Sherry Cranford came on on board, and she's an angel in disguise. Uh, uh, Bretta Coleman, my agent, she's an angel, another angel in the skies. They worked together back there in the Arista days and, and all the big record deals with Joe Galani mm -hmm. here in Nashville. And they work great as a team. And my producer is wonderful. I just have from the camera crew to the lighting crew to my uh, sound guys to the band. Um, it, it's just it's amazing how hard they work mm -hmm. to achieve what we're doing and my guitar player when we first cut the first series my guitar player called me dan Droback called me and he goes well man you did it and i'm like what we what i do and he right. said you pulled it off i said no 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 and i still believe this not because i'm talking to you i tell everybody this that this was a team effort mm -hmm. this is a team yeah i could not do this by myself yeah 
could not. There's no way I could do this by myself. And I appreciate everybody that's on the team. They know what they're doing. They're good at what they do. And they work really hard mm. for what we're trying to do. And, yeah. and you're right. It, it's a team effort. Um, I've always been told, well, you're the monkey who can start stop the show. I said, yeah, but I got all these people behind me that's pushing me. You yeah. know, and it, so it means a lot. It, it, it yeah. does. It really means it. we've become a family. Yeah, we have become you, a family, and you, and and I, we don't want anybody to tread on our family. We <laughs> we treat it that way. Yeah, you, you get to a point where you're in so deep where everybody's kind of counting on you, and that that pressure exactly. is kind of that that motivator and that accountability is kind of what keeps you going. Yeah, it keeps you going. And, you know, my, my guitar, one of my other guitar players, Donnie, uh, Donnie Clark, I talked to him yesterday, a couple of days ago. Yeah. And we were talking about things and where we're going in the future with dates on the road and, and yeah. a television show and this and the other. And he made a comment to me that just like stuck in my brain and it makes me even more motivated. He said, well, and Donnie's a great player. Donnie was, was the lead singer for Pure Prairie League for right. seven or eight years. I mean, the guy's just a, a, a massive talent. Everybody in the group is a massive talent. Yeah. But he made this comment to me and he said, Jimmy, he said, he said, man, I'm with you. He said, I've never seen you fail yet. And I'm like, oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Love to hear it. Thank I, you, honey, for more pressure. You know? <laughs> just exactly what I needed. Thanks. So that's what I needed today, dude. Thank you. But <laughs> you know, I appreciate all the confidence you have in me, but I'm like, that's just, that has stuck in my brain all week since I talked to him. And I'm like, right. okay, that right. makes me even harder. I can't let this guy down. I can't let any of them down. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. it's, so it's, it, a thing. It, it, it's a motivator. It is a yeah, motivator for sure. So, so with, with the show, you said you're in the eighth season on the show and you're still releasing music as well, right? Yeah, we're releasing music. I, I, have developed myself as a um i am a, a residence down in texas mm -hmm. and also and um um i have a, a great pr promotional team down in texas called the, the spacic group ed spacic who's actually sissy spacic in the coal miners daughter's brother mm -hmm. and um he was here in nashville for many many years doing radio promotion with all the big labels and just got kind of, you know, burnt out on it. And so he went back down to Texas, started Red Dirt Promotions. Anyway, so we release, we release two singles a year, mm. um, mostly to the Texas market, but it's out there. It's out there on Spotify and, and YouTubes and everything we have, social media, it's out there. Um, I'm very fortunate that um, we've released five singles in that market and um, every one of them have charted. Um, and some have gone higher than others, but you know, yeah. we, we, we've always stayed in the, in the top 75, top 50, you nice. know, that yeah. kind of thing, so, which is a blessing to me. Um, and, uh, um, it's a lot of fun, but we do, I still release music and, mm -hmm. and with the television show and you know, everything now has gotten visual. Yeah. So we push everything for YouTubes and, and yeah, we've got the Spotify, but we really push YouTube and mm -hmm. anything of that nature through the website. Yeah, that way, you kind of, that way you can kind of see what we do, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of thing, you know. Yeah. Oh, uh, so you said you had a residency down here in Texas. Whereabouts in Texas? Yeah, it's in um, actually in Ab uh, Abernathy, right okay. outside of right outside of Lubbock. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, so that's, that's more 20, west. About twenty one about twenty one miles north of north of Lubbock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, so I'm in Waco, which is about oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, that that's a little bit further east than Lubbock, but I drive through Lubbock all the time. I go to um, I got I lived in Roswell, New Mexico for four years, and so I still got a bunch of friends that are out there. And it's like every once in a while, I'll make that eight hour trek out to Roswell, New Mexico. <laughs> I know, I, you know, I, I think everything, I think anything from point A to point B is at least eight hours from anywhere in Texas. But yeah. I love it. I love it. I love oh, yeah. Texas. Love it. It, it's such a unique place and and just the, the especially the music people we travel a lot down there actually mm -hmm. myself and everybody in the band mm -hmm. um we were with earl thomas conley for okay. many years i was with earl about seven or eight years and the, some of the other guys were been there way longer than i was and we used to play a lot down in texas and and go down there and and, and the, the texas people are just great man they love music yeah. Yeah. they love it and, and we love it's... going down there the music community here is so unique. I've never seen a community look out for each other as much as they do here, at yeah. least in central Texas, like in the, 
the uh, Triangle of Central Texas. Um, oh yeah, they they do a music festival every year, and it's l l more of a like a high school reunion than it is a actual music festival. Right, right, yeah. And so it, it's a really cool experience when you get to go, and it's you know just friends kind of hanging out. And yeah, there's people that are paying to be there and just kind of enjoy the experience. But you know, right, right, yeah, yeah. So, oh, um, yeah. It it's cool down there and a lot of great talent. And that's, that's one thing we're trying to do too. I've had some Texas artists on the show and want to get more because I, I tell you what, man, there, yeah, you know this yourself. Yeah. Yeah. There is so much great talent in Texas, Oklahoma yep. that no one knows about. It's amazing. It's amazing. The talent that's down there. And, and I know some have been fortunate to go a little bit more national than others, but my daughter, when she got married, um, she went to, uh, um, Texas A and M got her uh, well to West Texas A and M, and then she was at um, Texas Tech and got her master's, and uh, um, which lives down. She lives in Abernathy, and, mm -hmm. and her and her husband. And anyway, when she she came home to get married, right, and she wanted this band, and I never heard of it, never mm -hmm. heard of it. I got involved with the Texas market, and uh, and she goes, "Oh, I love them. I just love them. We gotta have them." I said, "Okay, well, who are they?" And she said, "They're the Hog Mollies." Okay, that, that's right. a name. Yeah, and that's if that's who you want. Then and man, those guys showed up four piece band. Yeah, and they knocked it out of the park. A great yeah. band. I mean, it's just amazing. And that's what got me more paying attention to a lot of Texas artists. And there's just so much talent down there, mm -hmm. just so much. And I've gone down there to the uh, been down there for the for the Texas Radio Award Show. Yeah, um, down to Texas Live in Arlington. Yep. And I'm going back in March and met so many, so many terrific people. I mean, it's just like, it, it, it's kind of like their own big family down there anyway. You know, like yeah. you said, a yeah. big reunion. Everybody just, they, they appreciate what they do. They feed off each other. And, and I love that. I love yeah. that. Te yeah. Texas, to me, Texas to me is kind of like Europe. We were over in Europe several years ago. And Texas is that, uh, Europe is that way. They just like yeah. music. And it's yeah. a big family. And Texas is like that too. And I, yeah. I love it now. Yeah, I so I've enjoyed my time here, and I hope to kind of keep keep it here. You know that that's kind of where I'm at. So, um, right. but I really appreciate you taking the time to sit down and chat with us here a little bit. Uh, hey, I, I, I appreciate you having me on, my man. I yeah. really do. I appreciate yeah. it so much. Thank you. And when next time you're in Texas, we'll have to sit down and do this proper face to face. I feel like <laughs> we will put on an all time conversation. So. Yeah, we, we, we'll do it. We'll do it. I'll keep you in touch and let you know what the schedule is. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, if anybody wants to check out the show, the music, uh, anything that you got going on, where's the best place to find you? Best place to find it is at, at my website. It's at uh, uh, www.jimmybowen.com, jimmybowen.com. And you can go on there and there's a, uh, a button for TV. You can watch all six uh, the seven season is slowly getting on the website yeah but the first six seasons are fully on there it's on youtube we've got all the information on there we'll have dates on there where we'll be performing and every you know kind of you know back years ago i'm not trying to hold you up that they they you know when myspace came out and all these yeah. other social yeah. things came out but i think the websites have come back now is that's everybody's information center yeah. is go to your website website websites i think are getting better bigger now than they were so yeah, check out my website, jimmybowen.com, and and it's got everything on there and they can watch anything they want to. Awesome. Awesome. Well, once again, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thank you for stepping in to help us fight against pancreatic cancer. It's a yes. so it's, it's a joy getting to talk to you. So uh hopefully we get to do it again. Uh, we'll we'll stay in contact. I I work with Sherry quite a bit, so we'll we'll yeah, kind of keep that with yeah, we'll we'll stay in touch. And good luck with the fundraiser. I wish yep. you all the best. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to do a little musical switcheroo. We got our next guest in the queue. And Jimmy Bowen, thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. Enjoy that, Andy Griffith. <laughs>